Okay, welcome back uh, to this course on introduction to polymer science. In the last uh, lecture, we had discussed about some definitions and terminologies related to polymers. For example, uh, degrees of polymerization, repeating unit, structural units and the name, the term polymers and macromolecules and so on. In this uh, lecture, we will divide the polymers into different classes based on some parameters and also we will introduce uh, how to name polymer molecules. We talked about uh, homopolymers which are basically made from a single monomer and typically we can represent a homopolymer just like A and A being any, mo any representative monomer and typically it is written in a third bracket or a single bracket A with, with N where N is the number of repeated units. When you talk about copolymers, copolymers we can divide based on the arrangement of the repeat units along the polymer chain and for example, if the repeat units are arranged in the copolymer statistical way following a known statistical law for example, Markovian then we call this as a statistical copolymer. And one special case of statistical copolymer is random copolymer where the monomers are incorporated in the growing chain completely randomly which is basically most cases we when you talk about random uh, statistical copolymer we generally mean random copolymer. In this case uh, the, the monomers which are reacting and forming polymer they are just incorporating randomly in the copolymer chain and just to represent uh, you just uh, we just write a b completely uh, randomly without any bias uh, between two two monomers in this case we can also have alternative copolymer where if we talk about two monomers, then it is basically it will be A, B, A, B, A, B, A, B, just that two monomers are sitting besides one after another. So, basically the monomers are arranged perfectly alternatingly. So, we call this copolymer as alternating copolymers. Now, all these three cases statistical copolymer, random copolymer and alternating copolymer the properties of the final copolymer is, is basically a average of the two monomer which are present in this, uh, in this polymer of course, depending upon the weight of or mass of the individual constituting uh, constituent monomers. We can also have another arrangement of the monomers which we call block copolymer block copolymers are linear copolymers in which the repeat units exist only in long sequences or we call blocks of same type. For example, in this case it is schematically shown a di block copolymer. So, this is red color is one block and this is another block. So, basically the repeat units here exist only in the long sequence or block. So, this is one block and this is another block. Similarly, this is one block and this is another block. So, the, the block lengths are varying in these two cases. We can have a tri block where in this case we have a A B A tri, tri block. So, it is one block A and B and then again A. We can have a B C type block copolymer A B C where A and B, C, B and C are different. So, we can have similarly we can have many types of block uh, uh, as, uh, as per the arrangement of the monomer units. 
we can have also graft copolymers, graft copolymers are branched polymers in which the branches have a different chemical structure to that of main chain. So, in this case we have one main chain and, and branches. So, for example, in this case we have this uh, blue color one is the back, backbone and there is different branches which is shown here. And we can actually the graft copolymer can vary with number of branches or the length of branches present. And as we increase the number of branches or the den branching density, then we can land up from a, a graft polymer to a brass polymer as we discussed in earlier cases as well that uh, we call this as a brass polymer. So, this one is a brass polymer. So, we now discussed about uh, copolymers with uh, dif depending upon different uh, structure arrangement of the monomers, we can have uh, random copolymers, statistical copolymers and alternating copolymers and also we can have block copolymers and graph copolymers. Now, you want to classify polymers based on different parameters. Now, it is not necessary to remember uh, the type of classification. It, it, nobody should ask a student that uh, tell how many types of classification is possible for polymers. That is not the purpose of this uh, classification basis on some parameter, but as long as a students can remember the, the meaning of the types of polymers which is uh, shown in this uh, right column uh, is this that should be sufficient. So, whether the students are remembering what is the basis is not, is not that important. But what is important is that students should actually remember all these uh, types of um, polymers which are mentioned on the right side, right column. So, now I will talk about the different types of classification and different based on. Uh, for example, in first case we talk about uh, based on origin. As we discussed that polymers can be obtained from naturally from a plant or animal based uh, materials. For example, polysaccharides, uh, cellulose, uh, starch, cotton and uh, natural rubber natural rubber cis uh, 1 isoprene 1 for iso polyisoprene and then biopolymers like proteins nucleic acids and wool silk we can also have completely synthetic polymers as we discussed that uh, in 1907 uh, backland was the was the first who who synthesized completely uh, uh, synthetic polymers uh, bakelite but after that many polymers has been missed and most of the useful polymers nowadays in, in, in uh, commercialized uh, products are made of synthetic polymers. The polymers uh, which are synthesized uh, in the laboratory or in plants. So, these are uh, from synthetic uh, origin like petroleum products or natural gas and so on. So, those are synthetic uh, polymers. We can also have a mixture of these two natural polymers basically which means that taking the natural polymers and then modifying in the lab or in plant uh, doing some chemical reaction. So, we call that them as, uh, as uh, semi synthetic uh, polymers. So, they are chemically semi synthetic polymers are chemically modified uh, natural polymers to get useful polymers like cellulose acetate, cellulose nitrate. Now, in 19, 1870 American inventor John Wesley Hath reacted cellulose nitrate with camphor at high temperature and pressure to get celluloid which was eventually the world's first plastic material. So, world's first plastic material was a semi synthetic polymer. We will of course, define the term plastics in, 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 a, in, in just a minute a uh, few minutes from now. So, depending on 
the chain configuration we can define or classify polymers in different uh, uh, way like in a polymer chain how monomer is oriented it can be either head to tail or head to head for example in this case if we call this as head or this is tail and this is head then this is head and this is tail so basically it's a head to tail arrangement but in this case it's a head tail head tail so in this case it's a head head to head or tail to tail whatever you can call either it's a head to head arrangement or tail to tail arrangement and in most cases you know more almost exclusively uh, cases is head to tail is what we found during reaction for uh, for reactivity point of view we generally uh, do not get uh, head to head of course there are some special cases we can synthesize head to head polymers but in almost every cases we get uh, head to tail polymers we can have other arrangements like cisterns uh, isomerization like for example if we take isoprene molecule and we can get polyisoprene we can get polyisoprene in 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 completely cis form so basically the arrangement across this double bond is completely cis and this and and this in this case cis this cis and this case also cis so it's a completely poly cis isoprene and where in this case we have all trans polymer so we can have different geometric uh, polymer isomerization isomerization so for example is a poly cis isoprene and poly trans isoprene we can also have ste uh, stereo isomerism or we call uh, tacticity and depending upon the arrangement uh, of the monomers we can have isotactic syndactic or atactic molecules this is very important the, tax, the arrangement is is actually very important in terms of um, the properties of these polymers so this comes when you have a asymmetric carbon the, the monomer so in this case this is uh, in this case we have uh, this carbon is a asymmetric carbon so you have all these uh, asymmetric carbons in this case so the depending upon the stereo arrangement across uh, this asymmetric carbon what what determine this uh, tacticity so if all the say for example in in this case we have taken a polystyrene so a and b is a, a, a methyl group um, uh, and a hydrogen uh, group in this case uh, so so in this case if if the uh, if, if if all the arrangements are same then we call this a isotactic molecule if they are alternate as shown in this case so we have syndiatectic and if there is no particular order if there are these are the the, the, con, the conformation around this uh, chiral or asymmetric carbon atoms are randomly oriented so we call these uh, polymers as attractic polymers so if every every carbon atom has same uh, same asymmetric uh, arrangement then it's a isotactic and then we call syndiatectic and if there is a alternate and if there is randomly arranged uh, we have attractic uh, conformation attractic polymers now based on the polymerization reaction product we can also have uh, addition polymers or condensation polymers now we know in organic chemistry that addition reactions are the reactions where two or more molecules combine to form one molecules without leaving out any small molecule as a byproduct so that's the standard definition of addition reaction for example if we consider this reaction this is a 
simple example of a addition reaction where two molecules uh, in this case are reacting and 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 forming a a products which uh, without any small molecular byproduct now we can have same type of reaction for making polymerization and the examples we have given till now for polystyrene and polyethylene those are those are addition polymers so basically you take a monomer and uh, you take a monomer and then polymerize is just a addition of this monomers to make a polymer molecule so we call this as a addition polymer for example we talked about polyethylene polystyrene and many other polyvinyl chloride and many other things uh, example uh, can be given so in that way this polymer this is a polyurethane uh, written in a general form so in this case also according to the organic chemistry definition of addition reaction so this should be also a addition polymer similarly this ring opening polymer polymerization of this lactide is also should be considered as a addition polymers based on that in this case the monomers are getting added up to make polymer similarly in this case also the monomers are getting added up to make polymer and no in all these cases no no small molecule is coming out from the reaction mixture so in so if we move on then we go to next uh, type of polymers which is a condensation polymers and condensation polymers we know again from organic chemistry definition of condensation reaction that if two or more molecules react to form a one molecule along with production of small molecular byproducts like water methanol etc then we call this as a condensation reaction so the polymer which will form the product which will form along with some byproducts like water or methanol or some other small molecule we call those polymers as polycondensation product or condensation polymers now if you if we just want to give a example uh, we can just write a standard uh, condensation uh, reaction like say we can write a, a acetic acid uh, plus uh, say ethanol which will give say ethyl acetate so this is plus h2o so in this case because this uh, small molecule byproduct is coming out we call this as a condensation reaction now when we have instead of say acetic acid we have a as a benzoic acid and we react with uh, again ch2oh we get a ethyl benzoid i am not writing the uh, structure that you can write but if we if we have both bifunctional acid and bifunctional alcohol so like example is so i showed in the last class terethylic acid plus ethylene diglycol then on reaction say if we have n n number of these molecules and n number of these molecules then we get this polymer n of this plus 2n minus 1 h2o molecule so again because we have this uh, small molecular condensate uh, the monomolecule are coming as a by product so in this case we have pet polyethylene terephthalate so in this case we call this as a 
polycondensation product or condensation polymers. So, this is uh, one example and we can give several example uh, we will eventually give in in uh, when we go forward and learn uh, condensation polymers like the polycarbisphere and a polycarbonate example which we have uh, which we have discussed uh, in the last class uh, which again that is a example of uh, polycondensation polymer or condensation polymers another example shown here it's a reaction between adipic acid and hexa uh, hexane diamine and you get a polyamide in this case and uh, which is uh, commonly known as uh, nylon and depending upon the number of carbon atoms in in the acid and and the di acid and diamine we call this is, so in this both case we have six carbons so we call this nylon 66 we'll come to that name nomenclature uh, after some time so in general we can write a say like in this case general reaction between a diamine and a diacid to form this. So, this is a, a general example of uh, a condensation polymers. So, now we discussed uh, addition polymers and condensation polymers and we will also di discuss uh, after some time about chain growth polymerization and step growth polymerization which basically depends on the mechanism of polymerization and those these two classifications are related for example condensation polymers are related with step growth polymers poly, polymerization and chain growth polymerization is related to the addition polymers but we'll see there are uh, there is not 100% related to each other there are some difference as well. We will talk when we discuss about those two uh, polymerization um, techniques. Now, we go uh, forward and discuss uh, the classification of uh, polymers uh, based on thermal behavior and crystallinity. The first uh, we will talk about thermoplastics and as the name suggests that thermo means heat and plastics means formable means we can form something we can form or make and how can you make we can make after heating on heating the material becomes softened and once it becomes softened we can actually give that material the softened material a shape or design what we want. So, that is why the term called formable. So, this plastics which is very very uh, commonly used uh, term in our uh, uh, in every every uh, uh, livelihood the plastics is basically in general we plastic terms is mostly used for thermoplastics. So, thermoplastics is materials which we can heat it up soften and then and make whatever design we want. So, basically it softens with heat to a high viscosity melt and it becomes hard when you cool to room temperature. Now, because we can soften it on heating, it allows us to take the material, the softened material to transform in desired shape which becomes hardened on cooling. Okay. So, that is the process called molding process. So, you heat it up, soften it and then give a shape whatever the shape you want and cool it to make it whatever uh, uh, to make it a hard hardening hard product. So, it basically it can be re melted and reprocessed. So, it is basically recycle recyclable and thermoplastics are formed from large linear or branched unconnected molecules. Please uh, uh, remember or, uh, uh, that it is a large molecule, large macromolecules or large polymer molecules and of course, the molecules are not connected to e each other with each other, but because they are large molecules are entangled because otherwise we will not get this uh, high viscosity but they are not bonded to each other 
and during the melting process or cooling process these polymer molecules do not undergo any chemical reaction then this this uh, the, the process which we call molding process. And as we as I just mentioned that uh, thermoplastics or plastics constitute by far the largest portion of the polymers in commercial production. So, all the commercial polymers we see they are mainly uh, are, are constituted mainly by this uh, thermoplastics material. Now, thermoplastics can be either crystalline or amorphous depending upon the crystallinity. Now, in this case crystallinity means it is not a 100 percent crystalline as we will see now that we cannot make a 100 percent crystalline polymer. So, it is kind of semi crystalline what it mean means polymer as a crystalline polymer which means uh, as a semi crystalline material. So, amorphous these are as I discussed just now that these are large polymer molecules and they are not linked with each other, but because they are la large they entangled uh, with each other and as, as a result when we heat it above a certain temperature they become soft and high viscosity melt and when you cool them it basically becomes uh, hard again. The temperature at which it becomes or above which it becomes uh, uh, softened. So, that temperature is called glass transition temperature or T g in short. And so, basically that, that, that is the temperature T g glass transition temperature which basically uh, gives the, the temperature above which we have to process this plastic material and to form or to give a particular shape we have to cool down to room temperature. As you can see there is no crystalline domain in this case, the, these domains are these are all amorphous domain there is no crystalline domain crystals as you know that to have a crystal you need to have a long range ordering okay, of the molecules, but in this case as you can see that these none of these polymers have any order even localized there is no localized order as well. So, this is this is a amorphous domain and we have a per perfectly amorphous polymer. Now, we can also have as we discussed we can have a semi crystalline polymer because in this case we have a partly crystalline. So, these regions where as we can see the polymer chains are nicely arranged in order. So, these regions are crystalline regions and so, it can vary the crystallinity can vary from a low number to a quite high number, but it is never can reach 100 percent crystalline as you can imagine that polymer molecules are large entangled, entangled polymer. So, it is very difficult almost impossible for all the chains to come and align themselves parallelly so that it can make crystalline. So, as you can appreciate that because the large molecular weight or large size and entanglement this polymer chains cannot come and crystallize uh, crystallize 100 percent. So, basically uh, the thermoplastics do not uh, do not crystalline easily upon cooling to the solid state and this requires considerable ordering of the highly coiled entangled chain present in liquid state. So, we will talk when you come when the time comes that there are certain uh, uh, aspect uh, to be need to be present in a polymer chain to so that it the, the polymer chains can come close and align themselves in order structure to make crystalline. So, there are some some um, attributes need to be present in polymer structure to form this crystalline material. So, as you said we need to have we have T g glass transition temperature for amorphous material and for semi crystalline material for the amorphous region for the amorphous regions this regions we have uh, T g and for the crystalline materials crystalline regions we have T m. T m is the melting point as you know that when the crystallines basically form a mel melt uh, uh, above certain temperature. So, this these have two transition these glassy regions or amorphous regions will become softened above this glass transition temperature and the crystallines will become melt 
uh, above uh, this melting temperature. We can also have another another set of polymers which we call thermosets and the name as the na name suggests thermo is uh, heat and set means which harden. So, in this case the polymers on heating it becomes hard and so, it, so, so it start it is it is a when you start before heating at room temperature it is a small molecule or oligomeric type um, molecules which have low viscous viscosity and then on heating it reacts to with each other forming interlink covalent linkage between the polymer molecules or which basically gives you the cross linking between the polymer chains in presence of uh, uh, catalyst or without catalyst and form because of the cross linking form it forms a infinite uh, molecular network. So, when you heat it, it basically the, the polymer chains uh, cross links with each other and form a network polymer which we discussed uh, in last class and network polymers in which chain motions are greatly restricted if we have a high degree of cross linking if the number of cross links is very high then the motion of the chains are greatly restricted. So, we have a rigid materials. Now, if you have a less number of cross linking then there could be possibility should be some some amount of motion possible between the uh, polymer chains within the network. So, it can be little bit of uh, softened material soft material elastomer type material which we will discuss now. And the cross links as because they are chemically cross linked. So, once they have they are formed they are permanent and if we heat it further it will degrade rather than become fluid uh, fluid again. So, basically thermosets are not uh, recyclable material you cannot remelt and uh, process it again. So, once thermo material uh, this thermo sensitive material uh, sorry this thermosets are form you cannot reuse them again unlike thermoplastics. And we can have also two different so as it is shown that uh, these uh, thermo sets are uh, formed because of the cross linking between the polymer chain on heating. And it could be two different types of um, thermo sets as I was discussing just now that if uh, if the cross links are less and you have the, the polymer chains are above their uh, glass transition temperature. So, they have mobility to move around then you can actually stretch them that is like a rubber band when we use we can actually stretch them and it can actually extend 3 to 10 times their original dimension and if you leave this uh, applied stress it can come back to its original dimension and we call this as a elastomer with this call as a elastomer and that happens you can see this that you have a cross link um, network and this uh, this the chains polymer chains have some mobility because the glass transition temperature the, this of uh, they are the temperature at which room temperature basically room temperature are above their glass transition temperature. So, they have some mobility and the number of cross linking are relatively less. So, you can actually stretch them and to extend. So, basically now you can extend it um, 3 times or 10 times their original dimension and when you leave this stress they will come back to their original dimension. So, these are elastic material and as the name suggests they are called elastomer. Now, when we have a glassy, glassy means if the polymer the temperature is below the glass transition temperature then these polymer chains are actually stiff. So, they do not have much mobility this uh, intermediate polymer chains have not much mobility and as well as if we have the number of cross link densities or number of cross links are too many then they are actually the mobility also gets restricted. So, in that case 
we cannot uh, this becomes very hard material and we cannot uh, we cannot stretch them uh, so basically they, we call them as a uh, glassy thermoset material so basically in terms of um, thermal behavior we have two classes of material thermoplastics uh, where we have uh, two again subdivided uh, thermoplastics into two uh, two cases uh, one is uh, and then thermosets where we have uh, glassy and elastomer type uh, uh, thermosets now we we have uh, uh, we can further do a classification based on uh, application and mechanical behavior and uh, i will come back probably when we talk about mechanical behavior of this uh, polymer material so i'll uh, basically do this uh, uh, in quickly so you, we have you you know what is stress stress is uh, basically uh, the applied force by area so if you have uh, ap applying a force and divide by uh, the area it will be we call stress and strain is the change in length divided by original length now if you have a elastomer then uh, you can imagine that uh, only applying very small amount of stress you can stretch this uh, polymer to a high extent so basically strain is high on a given very small amount of stress so that is your elastomer in the other sides you have a tough rubber uh, tough fiber like the um, fibers which are used for making these clothes and uh, uh, materials where basically you need very high stress to to basically have a, a very small extension of their length of the original length so in this case we have we need very high uh, stress for a small amount of strain and this ratio of stress by or, or strain by stress is uh, stress by strain is your modulus so in this case modulus is very high and this is modulus is very low and intermediate we have uh, these plastics and we can have a brittle plastics to a plastics which can have uh, ill behavior so we have two extremes elastomer we have a fiber and then in between we can have different types of plastic behavior and as i said then i will come back to this uh, topic again when we talk about uh, uh, or discuss about mechanical property of uh, uh, the polymer molecule i think with this uh, i will stop uh, because in the next uh, class i will talk about the another which is the last classification uh, okay let me complete this as well before we close uh, this uh, class this is a simple this is a based on uh, this classification based on the amount volume of the material per, uh, which are used in uh, in the market so when you talk about this uh, very commonly used uh, plastic material which we use for making bucket and uh, and this uh, bottles which are very commonly used and you can obviously uh, anticipate that the volume of this uh, plastic material will be very large and the price should be very low as well because the the volume is very high, high so we call those materials are commodity plastics and in the other sides where say like the plastics which are used for very high end applications for like medical applications or space application which basically are is the volume is less and price is high and then there are some applications where plastics which are in engineering applications like in car and in structural applications which the volume is intermediate so price is also intermediate and performance also intermediate so based on basically the volume of the plastics or the polymer used in in uh, in the total market and its performance and price we can also uh, classify polymers in commodity engineering and high performance and in next which will be the final classification where we talk about uh, or we classify 
um, polymers in terms of their mechanism of polymerization. We will we'll talk about step growth polymerization and um, chain growth polymerization in next class.